Hello! Friday the 3rd of April. Good to see you joining together for our Friday prayer time. Sorry I was a bit late getting to the, uh, the studio just now. I had been thinking about going outside uh, like I did last Friday, but it was just too, uh, too windy. So here we are. I'm indoors. Hope you can hear me and see me well enough. And um, it's good to see you because uh, what better thing can we do than pray? And it is really one of the best ways we can use our time is to join together and to offer up prayers to the Lord. And so as we uh, come together like this at our regular time on a Friday at one o'clock, we just pause from whatever other things we are doing and we uh, focus on, uh, on the Lord for a few minutes. So you're all very, very welcome. It's great to see you joining in. Hello there. Hello to Pamela, Margaret and Kathleen and everyone else who's joining in and tuning in. I reckon it's about two minutes to one. So we'll see if we can round up a few more uh, it says in the Bible, when two or three gather together, then uh, the Lord is present among them. And we've got, uh, at this moment, seems like we've got 16 or 17 or more. So that is fantastic. And even if we're not literally in the same place, I hope that we'll regard this as a gathering nonetheless. Hello, Deborah and Imelda and... Caroline and everyone. So it is uh, a great joy and a great privilege. As the, the wonderful hymn says, what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. And that is our intention now, is to bring some prayers uh, before the Lord. As Richard and Rebecca uh, join in with us as well. And our friends from Nigeria, that is wonderful. I've made a lot of good friends since my fairly recent uh, time in West Africa, and uh, it's nice to have some of them with us as well. Hello, Sarah. Yep, great to come to the Lord in prayer. Let me mention something now, and then I must remember to mention it again at the end, and that is um, a new resource for prayer. So we're all discovering new ways of using the technology that we have, and um, we have uh, a lovely video that Sandra and Brian Russ have recorded, and it's a kind of a guided prayer video. And uh, it's going to go up onto the Facebook page and onto our YouTube channel a little bit later on today. So you can check back this evening for that. But what in this new video that uh, Sandra and Brian have done, they, um, they, they, they guide you through the Lord's Prayer. So they take it step by step and you pause at different places and, uh, and pray. So it's really wonderful and uh, I commend that to you. So keep on checking the... Facebook page and the YouTube channel. Those You'll find both of those by searching under Donegal Group of Parishes. And on YouTube there, we have shot up in our number of subscribers, but we'd like to see more than that as well. Hello, Louise and Kathleen and Peter and Richard. Okay, so very simple little time of prayer this afternoon. That's what we normally do when we were able to gather at the mustard seed, uh, but we are still able to uh, gather in this different way. And by the way, our prayers are being answered for the mustard seed because we received news just in the last week of two grants that we received uh, from the Priorities Fund and from the County Council to enable the work at the mustard seed to continue. Uh, into the future and so let's give thanks for that and as we come back there we trust after the present crisis is over it's good to know that there has been some real answer to the prayer uh, requesting practical help with the finance. Hello Audrey and Jackie good to see you. Now in the Bible in the book of Philippians chapter 4 
Uh, St. Paul says, Philippians 4, verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That lovely passage, I think it'd be quite familiar to many, and particularly that part in the middle where it says, do not be anxious, but present your requests to God and the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds. And I just wanted to read the verses around that as well, because also there, there's that wonderful instruction to rejoice always. And we remember, don't we, that our joy is not just connected with our circumstances. So joy is not just what we have when we've uh, won a prize or when someone has said a kind word to us or uh, when we've enjoyed a particularly nice dinner. Joy is something that is steady and constant because it is based on what God has done uh, in our lives and in Jesus Christ. And then Paul also says, let your gentleness be evident to all. It's a word for us in these days, isn't it? When perhaps we're living cooped up with other people and it's tempting to let fly our rage at times. Let your gentleness be evident, remembering that the Lord is near. He's not far away from us. And then after the instruction to pray, Paul also gives an instruction to think about good things, to think about whatever is noble and right and pure and admirable and excellent. And it's a funny thing at this time of being isolated. Some of us have probably less time on our hands than usual because you've children in the house all the time and it's busy, busy. Some of us have more time than usual on our hands and we're wondering how we're going to fill it and it's tempting always isn't it to have the television on the whole time or to be scrolling through uh, the social media and of course we're adding to that as well here but uh, Paul also says to think about excellent things and praiseworthy things and that must mean uh, a, the most excellent thing of all of course would be to think about God's word Let's come before him in prayer now, and I'm going to leave a little bit of time for quiet. You might want to bring your own thanksgivings and prayers to God for a minute or so, and then uh, we will, uh, then I'll lead us in some prayers. So let's have a bit of time for a quiet prayer first. And Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for your wonderful goodness, for your grace and mercy and love. We say to you, our Father, that we love you and that we are grateful for all that you have given to us and all that you have done. We're grateful for all of the many blessings of this life. We're grateful that we are living today and that we have the basic necessities of daily living. And we're grateful, Lord, that you have preserved us this far, thus far. And we're grateful, Heavenly Father, that nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And we're grateful for him, that he lived and died and rose again for us, 
that he has ascended into heaven and that his Holy Spirit dwells within those who believe in him. We pray that you would draw us nearer to yourself and that you would draw words and songs of praise from our lips now. And in particular, we thank you for good news regarding the mustard seed and the grants that have been awarded. And we thank you, Father, for the way in which you're blessing this opportunity to gather together across the internet and pray that you may continue to use this for your good purposes. And we thank you, Father, that you are teaching us to rely on you and to place less dependence on the things which we had previously thought so important. And you are teaching us, Father, instead that we should focus our thoughts and our energies on those things which are of the greatest value. So for all these lessons, Heavenly Father, hard as they are, we give you our thanks. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's think about praying now for particular uh, needs. And we're going to pray, of course, for those who are in our health care system. Uh, last night, along with many other churches, we rang our church bell in Donegal Town in uh, recognition of all who are working in the health care uh, sector. So let's pray for them, as well as all who are unwell. Heavenly Father, we think of the present situation caused by the coronavirus, uh, both here in Ireland and in our neighbouring countries within Europe and also across the world. And as we begin to see the virus impacting Africa as well as here in Europe. So we cry to you, Father, and we pray that you may be pleased to spare many people from this present illness. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you will bless the efforts of all those working in research and development of treatment and vaccines. For those who are at the front line of healthcare in our hospitals, also in our surgeries and nursing homes. For those who work more behind the scenes in administration, as porters, as cleaners, and in the catering within healthcare facilities. We also thank Heavenly Father of all who work in delivering vital supplies and bringing them to us in shops. And we pray, Heavenly Father, for everyone who has been affected by this virus, and particularly if there are any known to us, we remember them now. We pray, Heavenly Father, for your healing and for restoration to good health. We also ask, Lord, that you would bless and place your healing hand upon all who suffer any sickness or any uh, difficulty in body, mind and spirit. And indeed, we bring them before you now as well. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And let's pray also for the Lord to use these strange times for his good purposes. Heavenly Father, we know that you are a loving God. And more than that, you are our Heavenly Father. You know what is best for your children. And we pray that you would use these times of difficulty and stress to do good in many lives. We pray that you would bring back those who have wandered from your sheepfold, that you would draw to yourself those who have never known in a personal way the love of Christ. We pray that you would refresh the faith of those who are flagging. And we pray that you would draw us away from those things which are of lesser importance, which enthrall our hearts. And that you would instead teach us to live by your grace alone. We pray for all who are at this time drawn back to reading the scriptures or to prayer. And we ask, Lord, that you would make your word effective in their lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. 
I'm going to use two prayers now. Uh, the, a prayer from the, uh, the, the, the prayer book of uh, 1928, 26. What's the date of it? Someone will correct me. The old prayer book. And then I'm also going to use a prayer which I actually received in the post this morning. And it was written by a man in the Church of England by the name of Lee Gatiss. Uh, plague in the, uh, uh, prayer in the time of any common plague or sickness. O Almighty God, the Lord of life and death, of health and sickness, have pity upon us miserable sinners, now visited with great sickness and mortality. Withdraw from us this thy grievous affliction. Sanctify to us, we beseech thee, this thy fatherly correction. Enlarge our charity to relieve those who need our help. Bless the remedies applied to assist them. Give us prudence to see and vigour to use those means which thy providence affords for preventing and alleviating such calamities. And above all, teach us to know how frail and uncertain our condition is, and so to number our days that we may seriously apply our hearts to that holy and heavenly wisdom whilst we live here, which may in the end bring us to life everlasting. Through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, thine only Son, our Lord. Amen. And a collect which is suitable for this period. Heavenly Father, our ever-present help in trouble, our fortress and our God, calm the anxious fears of all who turn to you. Give strength and healing to those who are sick and courage and skill to those who care for them. Grant wisdom and clarity to those in authority and humble us all to call upon you that we may be saved not only in this life but also for that which is to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, good to get together and to pray in this way. Thank you very much for tuning in. And uh, certainly I will put that prayer, uh, which I just read, the, 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 the short uh, collect there, I'll put it on our page as well so you can see that and share that. You'll also see on the Facebook page that I shared something about uh, an app which is presently free uh, for the NIV Audio Bible. So the uh, you can get the whole Bible read to you by uh, John Suchet. You can have Poirot's lovely tones reading you uh, chapters of the Bible directly off your phone or tablet or iPad and it's free until I think Monday. So go and check that out as well. That's nothing to do with us. It comes from the, the publisher, but I just noticed it on the internet and I thought I would share that with you. And then uh, around about tea time, we'll put up on the site uh, the prayer video that Sandra and Brian have done, which is a guided prayer uh, journey through the Lord's Prayer. It's about... Um, 10 or 12 minute video, but you pause it at different places to, uh, to add your own prayers. So you could maybe set aside a wee bit of time later on tonight or first thing in the morning to use that video and it's really excellent. So I commend that to you. We will gather together on Sunday at 11 a.m. If you can make it, it's Palm Sunday. So we're thinking about Jesus coming into Jerusalem uh, on the donkey and we'll be focusing in on that and there will be, God willing, prayer, Bible, music and uh, we will worship God in that way 
And uh, then next week is Holy Week and you'll find on the Facebook page and soon on our website the details of the Holy Week services. We're following in a slightly different way the tradition of joint uh, worship with other uh, churches, with the Methodist and Presbyterian churches, which has been going on for at least 50 or 60 years in Holy Week. And so Wednesday night, there's going to be a service from the Methodists, Thursday night from the Presbyterian, and Friday, Good Friday morning from myself, God willing. So that's all to come. So it's over and out uh, from me for now, and you can share this and invite your friends to watch on Catch Up. But please do join us on Sunday morning, 11 a.m. for our next uh, kind of official time together. God bless.